Now, housing is shaping up as a battleground uh, in the lead-up to the next federal election, with Labor announcing their policy to change negative gearing and capital gains policies. But with three million Australians living under the poverty line, what policies are being proposed to assist them? To discuss this, we're talking now with Cassandra Goldie, who's the CEO of the Australian Council of Social Services, and also with Danita Warne, who's the CEO of the Master Builders Association. Thanks, both of you, for coming in this morning. Good morning. Well, I might actually just start with housing and start with you, Danita, on Labor's policy to limit negative gearing to new homes and also cut that capital gains. The Masters Builders Australia into Labor's negative gearing policy didn't include Labor's grandfathering of the negative gearing rules. Is that a, quite an essential uh, area to leave out? No, it's not. We were uh, testing new construction and the impact of it once uh, the policy would be implemented you can't grandfather what doesn't exist. Uh, so our study was focused on the impact on our sector, the residential builder sector, and their employees. And it found that it, when and if the policy comes into effect, uh, there would be a decline in new housing construction, decline in employment, and therefore a decline in activity. And that was contrary to the assertions of the Labor Party. And so we've called them out on it and would like them to rethink their strategy to ensure that we actually can create new homes for Australians and we can create more employment. Well, unsurprisingly, Labor has dismissed these findings. Cassandra, what's your take on uh, the Master Builders and their, um, their release? Well, of course, we're really concerned about, particularly for low and modest income people, how um, difficult it has been for people to secure affordable housing. And we've had a massive boom in housing prices and the fact that we've got some decline in, for example, Sydney and Melbourne, in our view, is kind of the direction we do think things need to go in light of where housing prices have got to. Do, do you not so think we've, we've reached... Long... Sorry, I was yeah. going to say, do you not think we've reached the point that... Uh, the, we've seen the falls in, in housing prices just recently, um, primarily because there have been those, those greater uh, regulations put in place, to, certainly uh, for investors. Mm. But look, we've advocated for a long time to transition away from negative gearing and this very generous capital gains discount, um, because not only is it about what it's doing to fuel housing prices in terms of private speculative investors, being in competing with people trying to own a home, but we're also getting the wrong kind of investment going on. And that's where I think we could have some interesting discussions with the with you, Danita. We want to see housing built as well, but it's yeah. the kind of housing that we want to see. We would yeah. uh, move away from negative gearing and capital gains, which encourages the small private investor into the market that's looking to get sort of growth in the capital gain and instead get big institutional investors into long-term housing. Now, the way to do that is with an investment incentive. So we would say use the money you save from the changes on the existing housing tax concessions and put that into a financing um, stimulus for, for example, super funds, big institutional investors, because we want to see about half a million houses built for mm. low-income low earners. Danita, what do you okay. think about that proposal? Well, Cass I don't think Cassandra and I are going to disagree that it's really important that we get a housing affordability right, but what we will disagree on is negative gearing and CGT. You can't take a sledgehammer approach on negative, ga uh, ga negative gearing and capital gains to resolve the housing affordability problem. There are far broader opportunities to solve those problems without having an adverse impact on our industry. And so there are issues around land supply. We do not see state governments ensuring that there is sufficient land supply for housing which increases the cost of land. We see impediments on our planning laws and we also see very high developer charges. So we need to look at this holistically. Even the Henry Tax Review said that we need to focus on supply and increased supply of land to enable an increase in housing development to ensure that the prices remain um, stable. But there's also the issue around social housing and we believe it's critically important that there is a greater focus on housing, uh, social housing and also to ensure that the rental market is stable enough for those who want to rent can do so at a reasonable price. But isn't that uh, Cassandra's point, Danita, that how do you encourage uh, builders and developers to invest in that social housing? 
Well, we say that you don't uh, do a sledgehammer approach on negative gearing and capital gains tax, but nevertheless, there are alternative options. One is those land supply issues, the developer charges that are increasing at a state and council level. But equally, we've got to look at the investor settings. For example, the developers are concerned that we don't have the settings right for the build to rent market, that we can increase the rental stock that we have available in Australia. So it's probably time where all of those stakeholders concerned uh, sit down and look at this holistically, that we aren't looking at things in isolation uh, to the detriment of others. Cassandra, is there an element of Labor's policy that discourages investment and is the industry right to be nervous about this? Well, I think the important thing to highlight with negative gearing is that 90 per cent of the negatively geared properties are in existing stock. We're not, this is not actually a big tool for stimulating new supply. We could do much better out of the estimate, it's about $5 billion that's costing the bottom line with those two negative gearing, the capital gains discount, repurposing that into the kind of right financing stimulus for super funds and the big institutional investors, I think, and also direct financing from government. We want about a billion to go into social housing. We haven't had a big investment in social housing for decades. Mm. That would have to make the construction industry happy for us to get that kind of supply going. But it's about the right supply because at the moment, people on low incomes, we've got over 100,000 people who are homeless. We've got almost a million people who are in serious housing stress. That's got to be where we want to see the kind of stock build. Well, and further to that, Cassandra, you recently, ACOS recently released its report on, on poverty in Australia. You've got your national conference starting tomorrow. Well, this will be a feature, of course. What, would, what policies would you like to be put in place to alleviate the problem where you have around 3 million Australians living below the poverty line? Well, we do. It's about 13 percent of the population and it's been around about that percentage of the population right through this boom era. We're now the wealthiest country in the world. That was confirmed just last week by Credit Suisse. The wealthiest country in the world, that number of people in poverty. It's very straightforward. We need to increase the base rates of that unemployment payment, New Start, wide agreement that that's the single most effective immediate measure to um, tackle people's incomes that are seriously below the poverty line, and then housing. It's so crucial we get this right. That's why we absolutely will stand by our push on the change to the tax concession arrangements. We've got to get more supply, the right kind of supply, so it's more affordable, because that is the big cost of living pressure. And the corrosive effects of living in very short-term rental housing where you can be evicted at any time, we need long-term rental options so that renting becomes a great housing option for you too, and affordable. Danita, we are a wealthy couple. Country, can we afford to rise new start? Look, the industry is focused on employment opportunities and Obviously, we need to get back onto surpl into surplus before we start increasing uh, handouts by government. Our focus is on industry is in opportunities for employment. Uh, we know that despite the downturn in the residential sector, we will forecast for significant growth in the commercial and civil sectors. We know we cannot get enough apprentices. Uh, so our focus is actually getting people into jobs rather than getting uh, your ongoing uh, uh, handouts from government. Let's get them into employment. We've got a huge number of apprenticeships available and certainly our focus is getting those employment figures up and therefore getting unemployment and particularly youth unemployment figures down. That's our focus as an industry as opposed to changing the settings of uh, more government welfare. Well, Cassandra, I can see you shaking your head oh, there. Yeah. Certainly that's the mantra yeah. of this current government. Is it's all about creating jobs <laughs> and then that will flow on as far as certainly people that are on lower wages are concerned. Mm. Well, look, it's disappointing, Danita, to be using the term a handout as if that's some kind of a, you know, it's a bad thing. Our social security is a safety net for all of us. I mean, you know, you can lose your job for a range of reasons. It can happen to anybody, you know, relationship breakdown, job loss. These are the kinds of situations that mean you may need to rely on Social Security at a point in time. So we have to make sure it's adequate. We want to see people um, with the job opportunities. Right now, there's one job available for every eight people looking for one. It is a reality of the current labour market, which is shrinking in terms of its uh, the entry level. When you've been locked out of the labour market 
for some time, it's hard to get back in. So we've worked constructively with the government over the review of the employment services system and the right pathways into real jobs, into the construction industry. They're the kinds of things we want to work on. But at the same time, we have to acknowledge that $39 a day for mm. New Start, whilst you are out of work, is just not loved enough to live with any dignity. Just very quickly before Sandra, we... I would, yeah, I would sorry, like, go on, I'd, 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 I think the important thing is we would like to see greater government services in matching people that are underemployed or unemployed into the jobs that we know we have. We know the system is not working effectively at the moment because we wouldn't otherwise see those youth unemployment figures they are. Where can we focus the money the best? And we think it is ensuring that those people get to the jobs that we know we have. All right, we'll have to leave it there, I'm afraid. Cassandra Gotti, Danita Warren, thanks so much for your time. Thanks for having us. My pleasure.